and welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for gamers by gamers. I'm Barjo. And I'm Hex. And I am Darren. Coming up on the show, the beautiful world of Ori and the Blind Forest. Ah, oh, such a pretty game. But that's not all. We're also going to sail the Zelda-like seas of Oceanhorn. Set sail for adventure! <laughs> Oh, such great games this week. But before we get into all of that, Darren, do you have a challenge? Affirmative. Power up your prefrontal cortex because it's time for Darren's challenge. Today, I'm asking you this. What do the three pieces of the legendary Triforce represent? Oh, that's a good one, Darren. Um, I know each one represents a specific attribute of a hero. Mm, let us think and ponder while Goose reads the news. Hi, Goose. Thanks, guys. Goose here with all the gaming news from around the gaming world. Nintendo has announced that it will be partnering with Japanese mobile developer DNA to bring its franchises to mobile devices. The two companies will both develop original games created specifically for mobile, and all of their IP will be eligible. As part of the announcement, Nintendo also confirmed development on their next console, the Nintendo NX, is underway, but provided no details except to say they'll give us more details next year. Minecraft players are well aware that diamonds are hard to find, but there's a good reason for that. Because apparently they're even rarer in the game than they are in real life. A metal consulting firm released an infographic which showed that diamonds on Earth make up approximately 0.02% of the Earth's crust, while they only make up 0.016% of Minecraft's overworld. <laughs> no wonder I can never seem to find any. And that's all for this week, back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Goose. It's pretty rare that we see smartphone games ported to PC, and it's rarer still for them to look as good as Oceanhorn, Monster of Uncharted Seas. His thoughts got polluted and his heart could not take the fall of his kingdom. Guys, I'd heard such great things about the original Ocean Horn, but I never got a chance to play it on the touchscreen, so I was keen to dive into this PC version. You play a young boy whose father disappeared battling the monstrous Ocean Horn. Your first task is to explore a small island. But even just a few minutes in, I started to notice something very familiar about this game. Ah, uh, yes. We should address the green-capped elephant in the room. Affirmative. The Zelda series is immensely respected and has influenced many RPGs over the years. But I calculate this game is the closest yet to directly emulate Zelda's gameplay mechanics. Yeah, I was stunned at the similarities. In fact, I was thinking it would be fun if we could see how far we could get describing this game using only the features they've copied from the Zelda series, specifically the Wind Waker. Uh, good idea, Hex. I'll go first if you don't mind. Darren, can you keep count while we go through these? Affirmative. All right, here we go. You play as a young boy one. living on a small island Two. who turns out to be the chosen one that will save the world from evil. Three. As you explore, you'll discover dungeons Four. packed with puzzles. Five. But to help you survive your quest, you'll find a sword Six. and shield Seven. in a chest. Eight. Impressive, Barjo. Especially the way you finished with a hat trick. Mm -hmm. All right, your turn, Hex. OK, well, let's start with his sword. As well as slashing enemies with it, Nine. he can cut grass Ten. to find hidden items like money Eleven. and health hearts. Twelve. He can even charge up a spinning attack with it, too. Thirteen. Plus, his shield can bounce projectiles back at enemies. Fourteen. But before long, he receives guidance from an old man. Fifteen. For setting sail. Sixteen. Once on the ocean, he'll collect treasure. Seventeen. And fight octopi. Eighteen. In between visiting a series of islands. Nineteen. <sighs> How'd I do, Darren? Nicely done, Hex. You outscored Barjo, but you both still missed quite a few. 
Just like Zelda, this game is filled with pots to smash. 20. And iconic weapons like bombs. 21. And the bow and arrow. 22. There are even heart containers. Number 23. And most shockingly of all, a golden Triforce knockoff. 24. 24. Yeah, guys, there are so many ideas here that have just been copied from the Zelda series. Still, the most important thing is it's fun to play. And I like to think of it more as a love letter to the greats. Plus, for a game made by a small indie studio, this looks pretty amazing on PC. It runs in all of the resolutions, and it's got all sorts of bells and whistles like ambient occlusion and soft shadows. Oh, good graphics. Oh, the ambient occlusion's lovely. Mm -hmm. it's good yes, yeah. that's true. Plus, there are still quite a few new ideas that the game adds to the mix, like a stamina bar that's used for both sprinting and blocking. And this gives the combat real tension, knowing that you only have enough energy to block a few hits. Well, as the saying goes, the rock is mightier than the sword, so I just chuck rocks. It's actually the pen, Bajo. The pen is mightier than the sword. Well, that seems silly. A pen is so small. How is that mightier than a sword? Ah, oh, Bajo, the expression isn't literal. It's a metonymic adage. It means figure of speech. I'll, I'll explain later. <clears throat> uh, but getting back to the rocks you mentioned, I did appreciate the physics system behind these projectiles, which sees the rocks bouncing off enemies, allowing you to re-throw them. Uh, plus, you can weaponize other items like pots and logs. <laughs> I liked how patient the locals were while I was practicing my throwing skills. Sorry! My bad. Watch out! Okay, I promise I won't do it anymore. <laughs> one more. Last one. Last one. Okay, I'm done. No, I'm not! I always feel sorry for the NPCs I have to put up with you, Barjo. I also really liked the magic system. As well as using the more typical spells like using fire to melt ice, you can get creative and summon heavy objects right above enemies' heads. Sadly, the puzzles aren't anywhere near as creative. Almost all of them involve simply pushing blocks around. And rather than designing the puzzles well so that they can be solved from any point, the game uses reset buttons when you get stuck. Yeah, that is a little simple. I was also frustrated with the way they used bombs. Loads of games use bombs to break walls, but there's usually a clue to let you know which ones are breakable. Yeah, like uh, cracks in the wall. Yeah, exactly. But with this one, there's no visual clue at all. So the only way I could figure out that I needed to use a bomb was when I tried everything else first. Madness. Well, that aside, I still enjoyed this game quite a bit. The combat was engaging and discovering all those new islands was good fun. So I'm giving Ocean Horn three out of five stars. Yeah, I had a great time with this game too. And if you can forgive how close it is to that Zelda formula, you'll have one as well. I'm giving it three out of five stars. Now it's time for you two to answer some questions at the Ask Spawn Point desk. Oh, let's go. Let me sail, let me sail, let the Orinoco flow. Thanks, Darren. OK, well, let's start things off this week from the king of all games, who is in Canberra in the ACT. The king of all games? Your Highness. Beep boop. Boop boop. Boop boop. boop. I don't know what the power is for the king of all games, Hex. Just work on it. Work on it. Oh, boop boop. Beep. Hey, GGSP. Is there going to be a new Street Fighter or any other fighting game for Wii U? If you do not answer, you will be banished from all games forever! So please answer. Sincerely, the king of all games. Ha! Oh, 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 we better answer quickly. Oh, well, your gamey highness. It doesn't seem like there's going to be a new Street Fighter on Wii U, at least not for a while. Sony has managed to score the upcoming Street Fighter V as a PS4 console exclusive, meaning the only console it will come out on is the PS4. It will also be on PC, though. And the news actually gets a bit worse than that for Wii U owners, because Street Fighter's producer Yoshinori Ono did say that the Xbox One will be getting some form of Street Fighter at some point, but then went on to say, and I quote, I apologise that we don't have a plan for Wii U. That doesn't sound encouraging, does it, Hex? No, it does not. As for any other fighting games, well, there's not any on the horizon that I can think of, to be honest. In fact, every fighting game that has been announced isn't coming to the Wii U. Uh, at least they have Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, and it looks like, at least for now, that'll have to tide over your fighting game needs. But if any of you guys hear of a Wii U fighting game on the horizon, then let us know and we'll let you know, Your Highness. Uh, but let's move on now to this one from Owen in Kabulcha which is in Queensland. I'm still bowing just in case. Yeah, okay. Game over! Looks like you're just doing a cool little dance. A bit of both. Oh, yeah. yeah, thanks for saying I'm cool. I feel pretty cool right now. I 
am five. My favorite game is Mario Racing. Now I'm going to do my questions. Are they putting a new Mario game this year? Second, I want to see new game. Third, is a new racing game? Fourth, I got Lego Marvel. Is there a new character? Hex and Banjo. Do woo woo. There's two woo woo. Get a. No. Well, thanks for your questions, Owen. And yes, there are actually two new Mario games set to come out this year. Mario Party 10 actually just came out and Mario Maker, where you can build your own Mario levels, is set to come out sometime later this year. Mm. That's all the Mario we know of for this year at the moment. But who knows, Ninty might have a surprise or two up their sleeves. They're always working on a bunch of them, aren't they? Mm. Mm. Uh, as for if there are any new racing games, well, I'm guessing you've got a Wii U since you're asking about Mario, and there's only one racing game that I know of that's coming to Wii U in the near future, which is Project Cars. Here's a quick look. And as for if there's a new character in LEGO Marvel, well, if you mean did they create any new original characters for the game, then no, all the characters are established Marvel superheroes or villains. Mm. Well, speaking of racing games, let's go to this one from Monkey Man, who is in Monkeyville, uh, New South Wales. Didn't know we had a monkey villain in New South Wales. No, it sounds like a great place. Oh, there'd be lots of monkeys there. Yeah, if you like bananas. That's true. It's a good place I to do. go. I do, good source Although, of potassium. They probably have a banana shortage there, actually. Oh, if you the like, monkeys eat all the bananas. Yeah, if you like my bananas, then you're probably better off going anywhere but Monkeyville. Hey, GGSP. I'm a mad rally driver, and I was wondering, what are the best rally games for PS3? Thanks. PS Darren is the king of all noobs. Well, Monkey Man... <laughs> There are quite a few decent rally games for PS3. So there's Dirt 1, 2 and 3, which are all pretty good. And Dirt 3 introduced a Gymkhana mode, if that interests you at all. And of course there's Gran Turismo 5 and 6, which are great racing games and both have rally modes. The rally racing is only a small part of them though, so if you just want pure rally racing then they're probably not great options. Mm. There's also the MotorStorm games, which aren't technically rally games, but they're great chaotic races with a focus on muddy off-road mayhem. And you might like to check out Sega Rally Revolution too. It's not very realistic, but it is pretty fun. Hmm. There are a bunch of other rally games too, but I'd say that those are your best options. So let's move on to this one from Isabel Bella, who is in Salisbury, South Australia. Hi, good game. I just wanted to know, is Octodad going to come out on Xbox One? That is all by P.S. Darren is a noob. Yeah, he's a noob. Well, Isabella, we know a lot of you have been asking us this, and we've even answered this very question before and said, maybe. But now we can happily change that maybe to a definite yes. Yay! <laughs> Dadliest Catch will indeed be getting an Xbox One release. Yes, very exciting. The developers have finally confirmed the sneaky cephalopod will be coming out on Xbox One sometime later this year. And they've also confirmed it will be coming to the Wii U too. Hmm, so good news all round there. But uh, let's move right along to this one from The Great Bob One, who is in Preth, Western Australia. Hmm. Hi, guys. My friend said that Hore Brian was deleted from Minecraft. Is this true? Thanks, guys. You're the best. P.S. Bojo, stop annoying Hex. Bye. Number first time doing this Hex. Do this. Ah! Hoo! <laughs> Peeve out. Well, Bob, it is true that in every update they release patch notes, which tell you exactly what has been updated. And in those notes, they do often say that Hero Brian has been removed. Yeah, but. Of course, Hero Brian isn't real and was never real. It's just an old ghost story that some people made up. So. Uh, that, 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 Hex, I don't know. Uh, why would they say they removed Hero Brian if he wasn't real? Huh? Huh? Yeah, can't remove something that wasn't there in the first place. Oh, Hex, Hex! Hero Brian could be watching us right now. What? <laughs> What's going on? Too spooky, too spooky for Bajo! Uh, 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 what happened to the lights? Oh, no, I don't know. It's okay, I'm sure it's nothing. The, the bulbs probably just blew. <laughs> Hex Barjo, behold, it is I, Hero Brian. Yeah. How dare you say that I don't exist? Ah. Hex, I'm scared. Can we please go back to the studio now where it is much less haunted? Uh, wait a minute. 
a minute. Darren, is that you? Oh, negative. <laughs> I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> Darren, look what you've done. <clears throat> I mean, this is a Darren. <laughs> Whatever. All right, well, uh, I guess that's all the time we have for this week then. And uh, don't forget to send in your questions here. Darren! Whoa. You scared Barbara! Oh, 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 Darren! Oh, 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 too spooky! Don't do that again. Oh, too it's too spooky. a bit scary. Oh. Ori and the Blind Forest is a 2D platform adventure game, and it's absolutely stunning. You play as Ori, a cat-like spirit who was torn from the spirit tree during a great storm. Found by the kind-hearted Naru, he was taken in and raised as her own child. But one day, a disaster causes the forest to begin to wither and decay, leaving the pair struggling for survival. Ori is soon forced out into the forest to try and save it, but weak and alone, he doesn't get very far. <laughs> Bajo, are you crying? Uh, no, Darren, I've just got something in my eye. Oh, uh, early on, you find... <laughs> early on, <laughs> early on, you find sign. Early on, you find sign, the light and eyes of the spirit tree who was torn out by the sinister Al Kuro, which blinded the forest and started the cataclysm. Sign tells us that to restore the forest, we need to rekindle the three life-giving elements of light, water, wind, and warmth. This is a love letter to old school 2D platformers like Super Metroid, where it's got that perfect mix of platforming, puzzle solving, exploration, and combat. The forest is a big open world that you're free to explore. But to begin with, there are all sorts of barriers and obstacles limiting where you can go. As you explore, Sign is your guide and protector. She's also your only weapon, floating around you and attacking anything that's within range at the push of a button. And in a pretty cool twist, she's also your save point. Yeah, I loved that idea. You can create a checkpoint whenever you like, providing enemies aren't around and you're not on a dangerous platform. This lets you control the difficulty somewhat. So if you see something that looks really tough, you can just save right there and keep trying. And I love how you can instantly respawn too. Yeah, it always makes such a difference in a tough game like this when you can just get straight back into the action, doesn't it? Absolutely. There's no time to be frustrated. You just give it another go. Also, there's no loading screens anywhere, and that's pretty amazing. Hmm. However, saving does cost energy, which you find in crystals scattered around the world. But the designers know very well how much you're going to want to save and how much energy there is in a level. Yeah, it's a clever risk-reward mechanic because you always want to save as much as possible, but with limited energy, you're much better off just pacing them out cleverly. Although you can find energy cells, which boosts how much energy you can hold. By the end of the game, I had enough that I could just save whenever I liked. As you progress on your journey, they've expertly paced out new abilities for you to find, like a double jump, or a stomp that opens up previously blocked off areas. I thought they did a great job of introducing each new skill too. They don't ramp up the difficulty until you've mastered it. Yeah, and the difficulty really culminates in those three self-contained levels where you find each of the elements of light. Affirmative. These levels are tough and will test all the skills you've learnt along the way. They each have their own special mechanic to deal with, like changing gravity or jumping through portals. <laughs> Yes, and they all end in what I'd say are the game's greatest challenges. Long escape sequences where you can't save at any point. You'll die a lot in these, and it's really just a matter of learning the path through trial and error, and then finally stringing it all together into a perfect run. I can see some people would get frustrated with these sections, but personally, I love them. They're just so tense as the music swells and you desperately try to outrun disaster. But then when you make it... Ah, oh, so 
so good. It's that kind of adrenaline rush that only a great game can deliver. Mm. While there's a lot to explore and fight, the focus is definitely on platforming, and they've done an outstanding job with the controls. Ori is extremely responsive. He goes exactly where you want, when you want, which is essential for any demanding platformer that requires pixel-perfect control and timing. Mm, it's not one for the noobs, is it, Darren? Mm, negative. Uh, a good skill level with platformers is recommended. I would say, however, it is an excellent game to improve and refine those skills. There are enough gentle areas that let you relax and practice, but when the time comes, you'll certainly need some determination to see you through. And I liked how there's such a focus on movement. For example, enemies will jump or swoop to where you're standing or spit out globs of pain that you need to avoid. It's all about positioning, and when there's a few enemies around, you need to be nimble. Yeah, and it's great how Sign pretty much auto-targets anything around you. It frees you up to focus on moving rather than aiming. Mm. Oh, my favourite was the bash move. It essentially stops time for a few seconds just as you're about to hit an enemy or projectiles, letting you aim a jump off it. Uh, not only does it let you reach new heights and areas, but you can throw projectiles back at enemies or throw enemies into each other. Yes, it's such a satisfying move, isn't it? <laughs> Flying through the air, bouncing off enemies and obstacles. <sighs> ah, so graceful. Exploration still plays a large part, as the world is full of hidden collectibles and secrets. You can often see them just on the other side of a wall, but lack the skill to actually get them until later in the game. Yeah, it's always so frustrating early on in these kinds of games. We can see all these things, but they're just out of reach. Oh, just out of reach. Give me oh, can't can't Give me quite it. get them. Can't ah, quite. Ah, just, oh, they're Give on the it. other side of it. Oh, how do I? Oh, but I can't get there yet. But I love the payoff later, once the whole world starts to open up to you and you can finally hunt down all those extra life and energy cells. I absolutely loved this game. You can feel it's made with such care and attention to detail. And the art! There wasn't a single frame of this game that I didn't want to print out and hang on my wall. This is a real gem. In fact, I'm going to give it a perfect 5 out of 5 stars. Whoa, a 5! Who? Oh. Can it get our first golden chicken and score a perfect double five? Oh, there are a few technical things I could nitpick about, such as how the frame rate occasionally stutters. There have also been some reports of some pretty serious bugs, although I personally haven't come across any of them. But this has such tight gameplay, and it's got some of the best graphics and music going around, so what more could you want? Darren, get that drum roller going. <laughs> I'm giving it five stars. <laughs> Congratulations, Ori and the Blind Forest. You've been awarded our inaugural golden chicken for double five stars. I think this calls for some special fireworks. Oh, oh Darren, these are amazing. Oh, whoa. Oh, that was a chicken. Oh, oh, oh so much sparkles. Oh, they make me, they make me so happy inside. Well, we're just about out of time, so we better get the answer to your challenge, Darren. Oh, it'll be my pleasure. At the start of the show, I asked you, what do the three pieces of the Triforce represent? And the answer is power, courage and wisdom. Oh, and did you know that they're each usually bound to a character? So courage for Link, wisdom for Zelda and for grumpy old Ganondorf, power. Ah, you know, guys, I think we make a pretty good Triforce. Yeah, yeah we do. <laughs> Next week on the show, get ready for another round of Fruity Fighting and Fruit Ninja Connect 2. My wisdom? <laughs> Negative. Um... Negative. Chop, chop. Watermelon is my mortal enemy. Hiya! Oh, I can't wait to see that, Darren. <laughs> yeah, as long as you don't go practicing with my breakfast again. Bananas shall tremble before me. <laughs> All right then. Well, until next time, Bajo out. Hex out. Darren out.